everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Catamount School's new show, CSTS, which stands for Catamount School Talk Show. You may remember Danny Miller and me, Amber Lett, from last year. But we would like to introduce Chris Wynn, a former cameraman, to the panel. Hi, Chris. Hi. Instead of a news program this year, we'll have more of a talk show format. Each program, we will have a new topic, such as today's, Mr. Harbor's Fish Project. We'll start today off with a video of their field trip to the Bankton Fish Hatchery. Um, so the fish hatcheries were built to try to keep the fish populations in the stream to where people could at least catch their limit within the law. All right, as the video somewhat suggested, in, in nature, the trout would be spawning about this time of year. They'd be going into the, the streams, finding a nice little gravel bed, digging out a little what we call red in the gravel with their tails, and then depositing their eggs. Approximately 12,000 eggs in that tray. Now, at one point in time, fish fish hatcheries have been around for a while, actually since the 1850s. So there's there's been a lot of research done. So we know, given how many eggs are at 12 inch distance, about how many eggs there are per ounce and then per quart. So when all these eggs have hatched, we'll transfer them to one of these concrete tanks behind us in about six inches of water. They'll stay in there until, well, really until next June. But once their yolk sac is absorbed, they'll become buoyant and they'll swim to the surface. Right now, they're so heavy with that yolk, they can't swim to the surface. That one's good. Well, that's not what I want. In the tanks again. So once that yolk sac is gone, he will, uh, they, they will swim to the surface and we know to start feeding the fish. And we feed them every hour during normal daylight hours, which ends up being eight to ten times a day. Oh my God, we have to feed ours that much too, don't we? Sorry, yeah. Eight. Did you guys hear that? Can you say that one more time? How many times do we have to feed them a day? Eight to ten times. Eight to ten times a day, just like a little baby. Exactly. Their, their, their metabolism is very fast right now. They, they'll digest the food very quickly. Wow. Can they see it move again? You have bruise. Make sure you stay over in this area. Point the one that's moving. Over there. See him right there. Yeah, there he is. So we take temperatures, yeah, sometimes two or three times a day. As I said before, below 38, they won't grow. Well, we use a baseline of 32 degrees. So we use what we call monthly temperature units or daily temperature units. And what a daily temperature unit is, is that, for example, uh, if you have 50 degree water, 50 take away 32 is 18. So you now have 18 temperature units for that day. And it's been documented that it takes about 520 daily temperature units for these eggs, once they're fertilized, to hatch. So I can predict almost to the day, if I know my water temperature, of when these fish will feed. Once they start to feed, we then calculate feed rates based on water temperature and how fast we want them to grow. In certain situations, we can make the, the fish grow two inches a month. Do we uh, pay attention to the temperature of the water pretty closely? We also have to pay attention to a lot of other things. Uh, pH is one. The pH gets too high, the fish will die. The pH is too low, the fish will die. Uh, we actually have a couple of different water sources. This water here actually comes from a limestone spring. It has a pH of about 7.5. It's very hard. That means there's a lot of calcium and magnesium in the water. 
Now we have a well water source that's very sore, that's very soft. It has very little calcium and magnesium in it, and its pH is about 5.5. We cannot use that water solely to grow the trout because there's not enough calcium in it for them to uh, intake to put down bone. Calcium, obviously, is the foundation of bone. And one of the other things we have to measure, two of the other things, is oxygen. The fish, trout need oxygen. If the oxygen level gets below three, trout will die. Actually, at different stages. At the very head end, you see the little cloud of them on the bottom? They still have a little bit of their yolk sac that they haven't absorbed yet. The rest of them you see swimming up and around have absorbed their yolk sac, and we've begun to feed those fish. Now these fish will stay in here, actually in this building, until June of next year. Wow, did you hear that? At that time, they'll be four to four and a half inches long. All right, now we'll move to the outside portion. We all, we, one of the things we do is we post every river and lake we stock in Vermont, and uh, here's those rivers and lakes. Everything that's been stocked. has been stocked this year, yep. Wow. The first ponds we'll see here, are uh, brook trout, the first four ponds. If you look, you'll see a white stripe along the leading edge of their fins. That's a primary giveaway identification for the brook trout. I can get you a pond. Oh, cool. So they don't need a lot of them. Look at those. Now, how many are in this pond right here? 5,000. 5,000 fish in this one pond right here. Now, they're going to let all these go at some point, of course, during the course of the year. And all those fish in there are going to be put in here. We'll see them in a minute. We grow, this one hatchery grows about 180,000 fish a year. Those fish weigh about 55,000 pounds. So over, 20, over 26 tons of fish are stocked in this one facility. And there are five hatcheries, five state hatcheries in the Wow. There are only five? Yeah. There are also two federal hatcheries. We're going to see some big ones. Now we also work with sportsmen's groups who grow fish for us, what we call cooperative nurseries. The fish that are in Shaftesbury are actually fish that have been put there by us. They will never see those. Yep. They want to They want to swim upstream. They want to go upstream. What are they doing? Jumping up there? They're trying to get up. You know, have anyone ever been to Shaftesbury? The ones in Shaftesbury? Well, you just said a few gift kits those fish. We're back. I would like to introduce our panel for today. Lucas Osorio, Leela Graham, Abby Thurber, and Mike Ware. Hi, guys. Welcome Hi. to ISTS. How are you doing? <laughs> okay. To start off our questions, why do we have fish hatcheries? The main reason we have them, Chris, is because of the dying population of fish. Um, and also because a lot of people like fishing, and there's just not enough fish to go around. So by having a fish hatchery, they can produce more and more with a safer chance of survival for these fish. And then they can grow in population naturally. How many do they raise every year? Um, about 100,000 fish. Wow. Um, how are the fish born? Well, when they're, fi when they're in the fish hatchery, they take the fish and they squeeze like the eggs out of them, and then they keep them in this container where it's dark and... It's, it's called a trough. It's um, like a flat piece of um, like screen and then wood, and they, they have the eggs all spread out. And then what they'll do is um, when um, the fish are ready to hatch, the um, their eyes will show, and that's two black dots. And um, what they'll do is they'll um, shock the water with a little shock, and then um, all the white, all the dead eggs will float up to the top, and they'll be white. And that's how they know that um, those are the dead eggs. And what they do is the way they get them out is they suck them up with. It looks actually like a chicken baster, and they suck it up, and you see all the dead eggs in there, and then they just. Disposal. Doesn't the shock hurt the live eggs? Not really, because they seem to live through it. 
so it doesn't really harm them very much, I don't think. We guess but. it's it's not really like it's not a hard shot to them, so it won't affect them. So. Um, we saw lines over the pool in the video. What are those lines for? Um, those lines are for um, because some people, um, birds, blue, um, or blue herons will come in, and they'll swoop down. And there's so many fish in the ponds that they can like just get a mouthful and eat them. And plus, that people will come in and like steal the fish and. That will keep them from trespassing and stealing them. And also, um, sorry, you can go. Go ahead. Okay, um, the fish um, are so immune to just living in um, the hatchery that if a fish, if a blue herring were to come down and try to steal them, they wouldn't have any wildlife instinct. So they wouldn't know to like to move or anything to hide from the bird. So they just sit there and they get eaten. But they're pretty, they're pretty well protected, not to mention the electric wires that go around the ponds. And the wires that go above it um, can help black out the herrings coming from above. Anything coming from the side would get shocked. So they're pretty well protected. How do they feed so many fish? Well, in, like, when they're outside, they, um, they get like sort of trained to jump up and hit this rope in this bucket. And it will open it up, and all the f all the food will fall in. And sometimes they get hand fed by the people who work there, and by us who go and visit, by the visitors. Okay. Um, the people that get caught stealing the fish, what is the um, penalty? What, yeah, what's the penalty? Um, you can lose your fishing and hunting license for three years, and you can also. You can get fined um, an enormous amount of money for I, your crime, what you did. I think it's like $500. Yeah, and that's considered like that. a federal offense if you do that. Yeah. So it's a big thing. It's a to. big no-no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, are there any other problems to watch out for in taking care of the fish? Um, diseases is definitely a big problem. It's sort of like they're so close to each other that, like, that, like, when they breathe, which is really sounds stupid. <laughs> no, when they like, if like, just like the gills will rub up. If one fish has a disease, they are so packed and close together in those little ponds that they live in that the um, the disease can spread so fast between all the fishes. And also, like, if you were to put your hand in the water, that will that'll spread because the chemicals and the germs that you have on your hand is very effective to the fish and it can certain things can happen like it can clog up poor or it can clog up their gills and and it, it can be serious problems like that not to mention if you put your hand in and even if you don't have diseases on your hands if you wash your hands there could be diseases already in that water and then you go and put your hand in other in another body of water then that could just you know spread it throughout <coughs> all the fish and that's why you really shouldn't it's not a good idea that's touch also them. a big no-no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we have another clip. It's of Mr. Harbor's class. Let's see it. What's done here is we've insulated a 20-gallon tank with insulation on the bottom and on the sides. And we've used a crude but effective method of icing down our water. Put these in the freezer and we just drop them in the water. The other very important part of this whole project is making sure our water is safe for our fish. This is an ammonia test, and we've made a chart right here. One of the students has made a chart for the ammonia test. We've also made a chart for the temperature. And we've also made a chart for the pH of the water. It's very important that the water not have chemicals or ammonia in it. This is the moment we've been waiting for now for about two and a half weeks. We filtered this water. We've been filtering this water for two weeks. It's very important for the water to be very clear. And we've been icing it down for two weeks. Again, it's very important for the water to be a certain temperature for these little fish. And what our, what our goal here will be is, after they hatch, to let them grow and to feed them and to let them go 
when they're about three or four inches. And what we've decided as a class is we're going to take a little hike. And we're going to take our fish somewhere and release them in the wild after we're done hatching them. Uh, but we've got a lot of work to do before that. A lot of math and a lot of charting, and a lot of, lot of science, a lot of everything. Right? We're pretty excited about this. And there they are. That's 110 right there. That's 110 eggs. You can see their eyes. And when I, when I was picking them this morning, sorting them out, I could see the fish rolling inside the egg. So they're very close to hatching. Yep. That must mean that you have billions of those fish in your hatchery. Uh, we have 150,000 of these eggs right now. Um, and actually 89,000 have hatched and we're waiting for the other 51 to hatch next week. Actually these will be the, these are some of the ones out of the 51. But right now they have accumulated about 488 daily temperature units, the DTUs we talked about at the hatchery. And when they approach 520 DTUs, they'll begin to hatch. Now we might get a few what we call premature hatches because we've handled them a little bit. Here we go. Slowly dump them in. Yep. As close to the water as you can. They're all stuck. And just rinse it out a little bit, yeah? So if your water temperature stays around 52, you'll have about uh, 20 daily temperature units each day, which means in two days, it should be hatching. It should be hatching. Can you get a shot of that, Tyson? Those little eggs? It doesn't look like 100. It doesn't even look like 100. It looks like about 20, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny? Did you get them all, Jess? Or the uh, Rainbow Trout documentary. Um, they have hatched. You may have seen the eggs. Now they are little fries. They're called fries. The trout have hatched. Our mortality rate is about 20 right now. We have 110 eggs, and there's probably about 90, 80 to 90 trout in the tank that are living right now. Um, we're going to pan over here in just a moment to show you the trout that have been swimming around. They first hatched, there was an egg sac underneath them, they're called, they're in the fry stage. And they will be off of that egg sac for about two weeks. When they start swimming to the surface, as a couple have today, they're going to have to start eating real food. That's when they produce waste. So that's when we have to start really taking control of the pH balance, the ammonia, and the temperature of the tank. And the students are all going to um, take, make calculations on that and chart them every day. We will start doing that very shortly. I've called the fish hatchery and they're sending over some food because we need to start feeding our fish. If we can, come on over here and we can take a look. The fish are still in a dark area. They still will have a dark area. Um, for our, uh, probably another week to 10 days. Then at that time we'll be able to take the sides off of the tank and we'll be able to actually see the fish. But for now they still need it dark. Now we'll take the cover off and as you can see if Tyson can get it a close up, there are very many right now. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or oh, 10 to 12 trout now swimming up to the surface looking for food. We're back. How did you create the environment for your fish? Well, we had to get rocks because their natural instincts would be to hide. Like, we got fake plants and we put them down in the tank and we got rocks so they can hide themselves. We also got a filter and we had to make this little crate to put the eggs in. How many eggs did you get? Um, 110. And we also had to prepare the cage, uh, the tank, by keeping it at a pretty much at cold. Degrees. Yeah, cold, cold, yeah. How many of your eggs hatched? Um, 84. It's got to be dark, too. We had to put yeah, insulation on the sides. Yeah, it dark and cold for them to hatch. What were the black dots? They were the fish's eyes, and when they show up, you know that they're about ready to hatch. And we got the eggs when the black dots were showing. So we got the hatch pretty soon after we got them. What do you need to know how, um, what do you 
need to do now that they've hatched? Well, we need to take a lot of tests. We need to take the ammonia test. We need to take the pH test. Temperature. And the temperature test also. And we have to we feed, them, to feed four them four times, about four times a day we feed them because, well, in the hatchery, they'll feed them eight They're times, growing kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're hungry these days. Because when they, like, when they eat too much, they'll grow faster. So the little, like, you feed them, the less they'll grow, so. And Not also, to mention temperature. Yeah, also. The higher the temperature. The higher, um, the temperature. You can say. The higher the temperature, the faster they grow. The lower the temperature, they stay, like, they won't grow as fast. Do you want them to grow faster, or do you want to keep them smaller? No. Do you want to keep them small? Mm. When are you going to let them go? In, probably in March, before it gets too cold. That way they'll have plenty of food to eat, and they won't freeze to death. We're going to go on a hike and let them go. Yeah, well, in a small river. walk. Yeah. Say a hike. <laughs> oh, a walk. Um, what are you going to do when they get too big for the tank? Well, well that's why we, we have to make a decision. We can either be greedy and keep them all, or we can be nice, I guess, and, <laughs> and, let them, let and them keep go. a few of them and, let, and give some of them to the fish hatchery. If, if, we, tr if we try to keep a lot of them, then we're going to have to keep them small. Yeah, if because we, if we get rid of most of them, we can get them, let them grow a little bit. We have them kept in a little, like in a fish tank, in our aquarium. Which so, letting them go is probably one of the better ideas because if we keep them, then there's a chance that they could die, and that's really not what we want. So, have you enjoyed this project so far? Yeah, it's pretty cool. What's your favorite part of it? I enjoy seeing them grow and get bigger and being able to overcome new steps of the process of growing them. Yeah, I think that that's mine too. Right now they're about an inch long and growing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, and there was actually one fish that was actually, we think, deformed. His neck was crooked. And but we think one of the kids today um, looked in the fish tank and they didn't and see him. They didn't so. see him, so we think he died. But yeah, the cool part of it is we get to see him, like, see how fast they'll grow, and we got to learn a lot about what happened, like how they grow and stuff. So and also um, a big shock that I think we none of us knew is that if you were to touch a fish, it would stop its growth for two weeks. Mm -hmm. so, it would stop it. I think that's pretty cool. That's so we haven't touched idea. one yet. Something else cool is they'll like go in like the filter when the water's running down, and they'll like try to swim in it, and then they'll go limp, and they'll like it'll push them way down in the water. So they they try to water swim upstream. Or something. It's only natural. They just try to swim upstream. It's because like it's like a little like ride for them at a fair. <laughs> <laughs> Use yeah. it as a little at ride. At the hatchery, they used to go up, and then they would you just just see them like in like five seconds they'd come down yeah they go keep swimming trying to up. Get up but <laughs> this, no with the filter it's not so good because it's funny to see them go up there but it's but we but found if they make it to their destination found, like, they get stuck we yeah, found about five of them in the in filter it. yeah so what subject is this in all most the of the most of the part of it is math. We do mostly Mainly. math in this. Because yeah. you've got to measure lots of stuff and make sure that there's not too much of certain things and not too much of a, you know, you don't want to have. And I guess it's wrong. sort of science and social. It's science, science. Definitely. Too. Definitely. Definitely. There's because a lot of you science get to find math. out like how fast they grow. So that's a lot of learning. Be. You are yeah, about just constantly all of everything. Mm -hmm. Do you do any writing or art? While you're doing not this? necessarily um, art. Not really. We do some charts. writing and with with the charts. But I bet later on when they get bigger, we'll probably do observations on what we what when they were um, fries. That's what you call them when they're <laughs> when they're French fries. baby fish, and um, that's what you call them. And then as they get as they get bigger, we'll probably do like observations on them. For instance, um, the man in the video. He's um, one of the managers. Mr. Walker, he like runs the, the fish hatchery and stuff. And he, and he taught us a lot about the fish. What we need to know, yeah. What do you well, actually, he's the head of the thing. He's like the boss at the fish hatchery. 
he lives there and that's where his home is and he built a bunch of these barns and that's where they are. Um, what do you need to do to make sure they can adapt to the new environment when you let them go? Temperature, we have to take it to make sure. And just, just like yeah, when just you buy a goldfish, you put it in the bag and then you put it in the tank so it gets um, adjusted to its new environment. That's basically what we have to do. Well, if they're in like 50 degree water in the tank that we have them in, and then we put them in a river that's like 65, that would be a bit of a shock to them, and they'll get like deformed and sick, and they'll just die. Yeah, it'll change their heart rate very rapidly. Yeah, and that could give them like a, a a stroke, a heart attack. You know, any pretty much anything could happen to them. And not so, to mention, not to mention bad chemicals. So when we let them go, we have to take some of the water from the stream and put it into the bucket that they're in so they can get adapt to that water. That's what they also that's also what the fish hatchery has to do. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about this project? Um, it's no. fun. It's <laughs> cool. It no. is. It's, you should yeah. try it. <laughs> it's really cool because we get to like it's like this project is our project. It's not like the teacher, it, the teacher's not doing it and it's not well, he's helping, of course, but <laughs> it's not like a class pet. And we're also helping the fish environment because right. when we let them go and they'll have more babies and it'll help you out. Cheers for the fish. <laughs> yeah. We're saving them pretty much because they die. And it's also cool because we have a chart where we have like where like this week some kids will feed them and then people will do the temperature chart and then next week people will do different stuff. Like feeding the fish. <laughs> So you guys would recommend this to other classrooms or Definitely. other schools? If yeah. you have the equipment and the and if you get proper instructions from like um, the fish yeah, hatchery itself, because you can't, I won't recommend doing it if, if you just went up and caught a bunch of fish. And just right, like, that's not such a good idea. You could, <laughs> you, could, you could, not only that, but you could damage it. Like we said, if you did something bad to the water that you took them from, you could not, you, instead of um, helping them by giving more fish to the bodies of water where they live, but and you could you could kill off more fish if you don't know what you're doing. So you have to be very careful and know what you're doing. And also how we were saying that we have to get them like adapted to the temperature. Well, it's different for the eggs. The eggs like when Mr. Walker came in and gave them to us, we could just pour them right in the tank because the eggs haven't gotten adapted to their new environment yet, so it they didn't weren't. really it didn't affect mm -hmm. them. Right. But they weren't they like were fishes. If they were hatched already out of the egg, then that's what affected their lives. Right, like we put them in to the tank when they were unborn, so they didn't know that they lived that they were in a they stream were before. Right, so they didn't know that they were transported over to our school. So when they were born into this tank, it's like, oh, this is my environment. This is where I live. So I bet when we put them into um, the stream, it'll probably a bit of a sh it'll probably be a bit of a shock to the fish because they they're coming from a tank where we're doing basically everything for them, and then they're going to go into this and they have to find their own food and that's why we have to in adapt. The wild. Them. That's why we have to adapt to their new world, their new lifestyle that they're going to be living in once we release them. Are you what else is cool is we got to take off the insulation a few days ago and now we get to watch them swim around right, because Cause when it was had to be dark and yeah cold. so when it was on we couldn't really look at anything we couldn't see anything and you couldn't see like when you were looking down you couldn't see anything because it was all dark there was no light shining in so there was no way to see it so but now we can see everything and it's just like a fish tank and it's really cool are you are you gonna let every single fish that you have go um yeah I guess we well we probably will in the future, but not right now. Not at yeah, all. Not because at it's getting time. too cold out, and the food is dying away right now. So in the natural rivers. Yeah, in the natural rivers, the food is dying away. So they don't like. So if we let them to, let it them go, they want to. <laughs> 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 if we let them go. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, guys. We'll be anxious to hear what happens when you let them go. We love to be invited on the show again. And if you have any more, if anybody has any questions, then you could stop by, pop by Mr. Harbor's class and ask us. Thank you for watching our new show, CSTS. We hope you.
um, you'll join us next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Camera rolling. Okay, guys, just sort of talk and laugh and say, "Phew, we did it!" and the whole thing because we're credited. Oh. Oh. CAT TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support CAT TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station.